All right, so here we're gonna review the KZ AS10 Pro. This is a 5BAIM by KZ. This was sent to me by Linsoul for review, so big thank you to Linsoul for that. But that won't affect anything about what I think about this IEM or anything I say in the video, of course. So let's get into the box. Uh, it's a very small, tiny little box here. You got the IEMs, which are not tiny and small. They're actually kind of big. Let me take this out. Take the cable out here. Take this out. No carry case. Um, one set of tips, which are, I just have a set off to the side here, so it's easier to show. And then, um, I think this is the foams here. Yeah, some foams in here. I don't use foam tips, so these are not really touched, but they do come with it, which is nice. All right, let's put this box off to the side. And, uh, let's get into the IEMs themselves. Let's talk about build and... Actually, you know what? Let's talk about cable first. Let's talk about cable first real quick. Because, uh, actually, for one another reason other than how I do it every time. Uh, the cable is very meh. I don't really like it. Uh, even though it does stay relatively straight, it, uh, it's, like, kind of rubbery feeling. It, it does have, like, a little bit of, like, a, it's curvy memory. It's not like, like, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? Sharp turns, like some of them do. It's just kind of, like, s like a spring-ish. And... I, I think that if it was all like this, it would have been fine, but it like goes into like a part where the left and right are both stuck together like that, and I, I don't like cables like that, but I don't know, maybe some people do. But um, the main reason I say that they should have a better cable is because it uses this system that a, cer certain IEMs do use this, of course, I've seen it before, but I think that if you're going to have an IEM with a connector that is not 2-pin or MMCX, which are the most common ones, should come with a better cable just because it's a bit harder to hack find one or at least it's like more unlikely that someone already has a different cable to use instead of the stock one so but otherwise it's a mediocre stock cable uh mediocre to bad i don't know i'm not really a fan of the cable but it's not the worst i've seen all right so that's enough for the cable uh now let's talk about build and comfort these are big these are really big, but surprisingly, they are not uncomfortable. They did a pretty good job with the ergonomics here, even though it looks like a very simple shape. They have been very comfortable in my ears. I didn't realize how much of the fingerprint magnet they are until now. Let me just wipe that down real quick. But um, these are s very comfortable still, even despite the size. Uh, it is 5BA. You can see them all in here. The back is a clear plastic, not resin from what I can tell. It sounds like plastic to me. Feels like plastic to me. Front is also plastic. Um, this probably is just so they didn't have to do like, you know, the resin printing tubes because that would probably be more expensive. This is a $70 set of IEMs. I don't know if I already mentioned that. And uh, yeah, that's it for really build. I mean, look wise, I think they look nice actually. I don't I don't dislike the looks. I think they look uh, fine. Uh, not very complicated looks. A nice look, not bad. Uh, but yeah, overall comfort was good. I could probably wear these for a while without having any discomfort. They are a little bit weighty compared to some other IEMs. I did forget to mention that, but uh, it was never really a problem in wearing comfort at all, so no issues there. And now let's talk about sound. Let's go bass, mids, highs here. This is a relatively competitive, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, price, price range, so it's a bit difficult for IEMs to um, break into that price range, and I think that this IEM really hit that wall, actually. Um, Let's 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 go over basement size first. So and also the reason I can't get these up here is the, the the weight is just going straight down here. I can't really get these to stay up. Yeah. So you're gonna have to look at the the plastic part for the majority of the review. Sorry. Um. So base mids highs. The base is actually really nice for BA base in my opinion. Honestly, I didn't even realize it was BA base until I checked the driver config. I got these, I immediately assumed they had a dynamic driver and it was a hybrid design. Because the base was very punchy, it was slammy, had, it, was, it was good punchy base. It wasn't detailed necessarily, and I wouldn't describe it as very textured. It was just a very fun sounding base. And it managed to be very emphasized without being boomy, but it's not enough to say detailed it's fun decent quality base i'd say it's, it's 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 fine in the price for the quality and it's a pretty decent amount so it was a good amount of base the base i have no really problems with in the 70 dollar price bracket uh going to the mid-range the mid-range is where there's some issues um i think that 
with these tips, these uh, stock KZ tips, I did not like the mid-range. I found them to be very thin. Um, and also in the treble, I found it to be very sibilant. But I switch, after switching to spin fits, CP100 spin fits, extra small for me, uh, it fixed the majority of those issues when it comes to sibilance, and it fixed some of the thinness. Uh, but I will. So most of the review is going to be talking about the sound with these uh, spin fits. Um, with the spin fits, the mids they still they're very they're very nice in terms of the tuning and and the presence, the amount how forward it is. It's not very forward, not too far back though. Nothing feels pushed back despite its bass heavy tuning. The mids are present. It sounds decent, but the note weight is a bit thin. Vocals tend to sound thin, and. Overall, detail-wise, I don't see it stacking up with the competition in the spice range. So, though it does lack technicalities and does lack those, like, the, something you see more in this price bracket, more detail, it does have a good signature. I like the way these were tuned. The mid-range does sound nice in its terms of its tuning and tonal balance. Um, another issue, though, these do have is a slight BA timbre, which, again, I've said this in my Rose Technics uh review I did recently of the um, Star City 5 Pro, I really thought that um, BA Timbre was a thing of the past, and then this, and that also, both of them having BA Timbre was a disappointment, uh, especially because, you know, even in these more budget price brackets, I'm not hearing BA Timbre so much, uh, so seeing BA Timbre make a return on this set, not something I was really happy to hear. Um, but it wasn't a severe BA timbre, and it's not something that makes me stop listening to this IEM by itself. So overall, the BA timbre wasn't a huge issue, but it's something I definitely noticed, especially with the stock tips. With the spin fits, it does kind of make it sound a little bit more natural, but it still does have that metallic tang to it. So it was, an, it is another issue to add on to other issues this set has. Really a big issue though for me was the lack of body in the track overall, note weight was poor. Um, anyway, going on to the treble. The treble was where the set does its worst, honestly. It's very, very poor detail, yet too much extension, especially with the stock tips. Uh, going to the spin fits, it has um, a more rounded off treble that sounds much nicer. It's still not detailed though, especially for this price. So really, the main redeeming quality of the set is its bass. The bass is very nice actually for the price range, especially for a BA bass. But you, and just say if in general, the bass is very good at this price. But the mid-range is not the greatest and the treble does have some struggles as well. When it comes to presentation, you know, the imaging, soundstage. Imaging wise, this also did very poorly. I don't see this doing well for any form of gaming usage or anything like that. Or in general, even, you know, of course in music, just it doesn't, it doesn't have very good Im imaging at all. It's very, uh, sounds very blurry, again, very low technicality, so everything kind of sounds muddled together. Um, it's not necessarily sounding bad, it's because it is, it is a, like a fun sound, like a kind of like a, it's fun to listen to. But if I was like analyzing music, this would be terrible for that. Um, the stage is above average, but it's still nothing to be surprised about. I'm going to bring in comparisons right now with the um, EPZ Q1, uh, the EPZ Q1 Pro, and the EA500. These are both IEMs under the $70 price bracket that, in my opinion, make these not worth purchasing. Uh, I mean, these are just far superior to this in like every way almost, uh, except maybe the bass is better on this. Uh, for example, I'm just going to do quick comparisons here because you probably realize by now I don't recommend this set. But I'm going to talk about um, the comparisons between these three real quick. So bass-wise, bass is the best on this, in my opinion. But bass on this does come a little bit close in terms of quality, but this beats it out in quality and quantity here. I like the bass on these actually for the price quite a lot. Mid-range though, these two both beat these out very easily. Vocals have much better note weight on the Q1 Pro and on the um, EA500 LM. LM also is far superior than, to both of, than both of these in terms of technicalities, um, but these are more superior over these in terms of technicalities as well. But the, the 500 LM beats both of these by quite a bit in terms of technicalities. Um, staging, uh, let me go to treble actually. Treble wise, um, this has the most treble extension. Um, 
and more than this and also has better treble than this um, but I do have a little bit of you know uncomfort issues in the treble every once in a while on the 500 LM but not as much as I had with these but it is a close to amount of a discomfort in the treble area where these are much more rounded in the treble so much more darker sounding so I preferred the the treble on this but in, if you like a lot of treble extension you want a lot of treble detail the 500 LM is the best way to go for that uh, in terms of imaging wise, these two are both better than this in imaging, of course. I think imaging is best on this. I think this is really spectacular in its imaging presentation. And also stage is the best on this. Then it goes to, actually I'd say stage is better on this than this, but it's not too far different between these two. Uh, and tuning wise, these are the brightest. This is second brightest, then this is the warmest in my opinion. But these both are pretty equal in terms of its brightness. Just a very slight edge to this one in terms of making a bright sounding signature. Uh, overall though, I mean, that it just it's, it's obvious by what I'm saying here that I cannot recommend the uh, AS10. Uh, on top of the sound not being up to par, build quality wise, this is full metal, this is full resin. Cable wise you get this instead of getting let me see if I have the Q1 Pro cable here I don't but if you look at my review on it, you'll see the cable is very nice on the Q1 Pro um, And also the cables honestly better on the EA 500 LM as well. So in terms of accessories, you're getting better on these as well uh, This is just overall. I cannot recommend the AS 10 Pro at the $70 price point I wouldn't recommend it at the under $50 price point either because the Q1 Pro exists if this was a time where these two IEMs didn't exist, then it would maybe be a different story. I feel like um, these could give a good comparison with the uh, cadenza here, uh, especially because the sound signatures are a bit similar. Um, the bass being better on this than this, uh, not the signature, sorry, the amount of bass being similar on both of these. This goes for more warm signature, this is a more brighter signature, but they're both more bass heavy sets. Um, I'd say though, I'd still even go with the cadenza, though the cadenza has even less detail than this does. The cadenza has a more smooth, natural sound that's more comfortable. Uh, but I honestly um, wouldn't recommend uh, the cadenza nowadays just due to the amount of competition coming out and now that the Q1 Pro exists. Uh, but this is starting to become a, a, a video about other IEMs at this point. But uh, overall, I wouldn't recommend the AS10 Pro just due to the fact that there's just better stuff out there for the price uh, and uh, it just it lacks technicalities. Uh, the, the signature is decent. I actually do like the way these are tuned. Um, the tuning is nice. The bass is good quality. The mid-range does need a lot of help in terms of note weight and also timbre. Um, the staging is decent. The imaging is not. The imaging is bad. And uh, treble-wise, they could use a bit more refinement as well. Uh, that's about it. See ya.